The lab today is igneous rock identification. So something to know about igneous rocks is all igneous rocks originate from magma. They were once liquid, and as that liquid came to the surface or if it crystallized under the ground, it cooled. And so as we go down the table here, we're going to see that igneous rocks vary with respect to color and with respect to crystal form. Some have no crystals and other igneous rocks do. Some are full of air holes, like we refer to lava rock. Some will float on water. And some have a glassy look to them. Some have a really fine ground mass, and then they have a crystal that shows up. Some of them, all the ash and everything got ejected out of a volcano. We call that pyroclastic. Some of them are really rich in iron and magnesium, very deep green colors. And some of them have very large visible crystals. So our objective today is to go and identify igneous rocks. And really, there's two ways that you look at igneous rocks, two ways to identify. One, as the first page on the lab manual talks about, is color and texture. So the rocks that are igneous can be light in color. Rocks that are light in color are rocks like granites, rhyolites, pumice, asphalt tough. Intermediate rocks that are gray in color are andesites. There's a rock that is half black and half white called a diorite. And there's dark rocks such as basalts, which make up the bottom of the ocean. They're dark because they're rich in iron. And there's a green rock, very rare, a dunite or pertotite, that's kind of a green color. So you look at two aspects. One, you look at the color, and then you look at the texture. So textures, we'll look at these words. Uh, we have pigmentatic, porphyritic, phanaritic, aphronitic, the secular, glassy. So these textures can be a little bit overwhelming, and so can the colors. So in order to make it a little simple, I've taken the colors and the textures and made some big samples of rocks here. So this is a good example of a light-colored rock, felsic. It's light because it's rich in quartz. That makes it felsic. It's a Greek word meaning felspars, and this rock is loaded with felspars. Intermediate rocks tend to be gray. And then dark rocks, which are mafic, are rich in iron. This is what makes up the ocean floors. The heavy, dark, basaltic rock is mafic. So after you look at color, you determine if it's dark, is it intermediate, or is it light? You then have to look at the textures. So you put in kind of two things, and there's many things to line up. So one of the early, biggest textures, one of the ones that has the largest grains, is this one called a pegmatite. So pegmatite basically means all of the samples, all of the minerals, are all very large. So these are all very large. So there's a marker pin for scale. So these are pretty large crystals. And then the next texture is called porphyritic. And porphyritic means that you have one large mineral that kind of stands out. Everybody else is kind of smaller, but you can see that this pink stuff here, which is potassium felsbar, case bar, and this is what we call porphyritic, which means one large mineral. Then there's phanaritic. Phanaritic is the equal rock. Everybody, all the minerals are the same size. This rock also, also happens to be intermediate. I call this the Oreo McFlurry rock. It's basically 50-50, half dark and half white. So this is phanaritic. All minerals are visible. All minerals are the same size. Then there's aphanetic. Aphanetic has no visible minerals. Now, if you look close enough, you'll start to see little teeny specks of everything. But overall, this rock 
is affinitic in texture. Then you have a kind of strange one here. This has an affinitic ground mass. You really can't see what's in the ground mass, much like you can't see what's in the ground mass of this one. So this is kind of what we call affinitic porphyritic. So it is a porphyry, but has an affinitic ground mass. And this is fairly dark rock. Then we have what's called vesicular. It means it has, it's full of holes. So this rock is full of holes. Lots of holes. And another rock that has lots of holes in it, but they're very fine holes, is what we call frothy. And that's typical what you see in pumice. And then there's a texture called glassy. Why is it called glassy? Because it looks like glass. Very vitreous luster, very shiny. And this color can be black or it can be brown in color. So this rock can be either black or brown. And then there's another neat texture called pyroclastic. This is all the material that got ejected out of the volcano, the ash. It has large fragments in it. It has pumice fragments. A little bit of everything we call this texture pyroclastic. And that's basically the texture. So what we do is you put the textures of the rocks and the colors And this is how we identify igneous rocks. So interesting thing here, I'm going to take two rocks and put them aside here. These rocks here are both the same composition, meaning they're both felsic. If I can get this one. So both these rocks are felsic. This one here doesn't have visible minerals in it. This one does. These came from the same magma body. What's the difference is this one formed at the surface. It cooled very quickly. This is what we refer to as a rhyolite. This rock formed underground and it cooled very slowly. And this is what we call referred to as a granite. So if you understand the aspects of texture and of color. This will help you identify igneous rocks. So I'm kind of zooming out here. So this page here has a chart that shows the important minerals. So over on the left side of the chart, those are the low temperature minerals. And look at the rocks below those. Rhyolite, granite. High temperature minerals are in the greens and the light greens. High temperature minerals form in high temperature rocks. Rocks like basalt, gabbro. These are rocks that form under high temperatures. So the difference between a light colored rock and a high and a dark colored rock is temperature. So temperature has a lot to do with it. It also has to do with the minerals that are in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through every one of these 17 samples. I'm gonna use the charts and I'm basically going to tell you if the rocks are felsic, mafic, what the textures are. And then you're going to use the charts to figure out what those rocks are. And this will be a multiple choice situation on Canvas, so I'll give you four choices. You can pick the one of those four choices. And so again, in the book we have charts. And here we have a chart, chart number one, that has all the light colored rocks. Chart number two has the intermediate rocks. Chart number three has the dark rocks. And then there's this chart here that lines up the textures with the name of the rock. So pigmentatic down the asphalt tough. So when we use the combination of these charts and in conjunction with what we discussed in lecture, 
This will help us identify igneous rocks. Of all the rock groups, igneous rocks are the most difficult rocks to identify. Metamorphic rocks are the simplest and they're our last group of rocks. So let's look at rock number one. So I put number one and two together for a reason. So both of these rocks, I'll slide them closer together here, one and two are both mafic. So one and two are both mafic. So in your book, in your lab book, you have a chart that looks like this. And I would go ahead and fill in. So first part asks you for texture. So this texture of number one is affinitic. There's no visible minerals in this. Number two is phanoritic. You can see minerals in this particular rock. So one is affinitic. This number two is phanoritic. They're both dark. They're both mafic. They don't have phenocryst. In the case of number one, we can't put down what minerals are in this rock. We, we can't see those minerals, so we can't put them down. Rock number two consists mostly of plagioclase. So this dark mineral in here, this is actually plagioclase. So I put one and two together, an aphanitic rock with no visible minerals. This formed at the surface. It cooled too quickly to form crystals. Number two is a phanoric rock. It formed under the ground and had plenty of time to grow crystals. Moving on to number three. So both three and four, and I should slide these two together. Both of these rocks are intermediate. What's the difference between the two of them? Again, texture. So this one here, number three, is aphanitic. You can't see any visible minerals in it. Number four, on the other hand, you can see minerals. This is definitely a phanoritic rock. Everything's the same size. So both of these are intermediate. The two minerals that you can see in this rock here are ampable slash hornblende and plagioclase. So those are the two minerals that we can definitely see in this rock. Rock number five and six, again, they're together for a reason. Both of these rocks are felsic. The difference is where they were formed. This rock was formed above ground. It cooled too quickly to form crystals. This rock formed underground. It formed very slowly had plenty of time to cool. If we uh, turn it on the side here, you can actually see that there's a larger crystal in here. So this particular texture of this rock is porphyritic. And this one here is aphanitic. So porphyritic means one of the minerals in here is larger than the other minerals. And that certainly is the potassium feldspar, the case bar. It is significantly larger. So the texture for number five is aphanitic. It's a felsic rock. We have no visible minerals. It's kind of a pink color. Number six, the minerals we can check off here is going to be quartz. The black stuff is muscovite, is biotite, I'm sorry, biotite. And the pink stuff is potassium feldspar. So it has case bar in it. So on that particular rock, you will check off the minerals you can see in this one. So the mineral list is here. It has quartz. It has some of the black mica, the muscovite, so you put that under mica. It has potassium feldspar. It doesn't have plagioclase, ampable, pyroxene, or olivine. Those are high temperature. Those are the type of minerals you expect to see in dark rocks. So this is a light colored rock, lower temperature. Okay. So seven and eight, again, are together, but these are both the same identical texture. These are both vesicular, so they have air holes in them. One's darker than the other, so this is the lighter color one. 
So these are both, what, we, what we, people refer to as these rocks as lava rock. And so the texture is vesicular. These are both mafic rocks, although sometimes this red one is confused and called intermediate because of its red color. But they are mafic. And then a rock that has very, very fine holes in it. And these two rocks are to occur together, number nine and 10 are both what we call frothy. Both these rocks have something in common. They float on water. They're volcanic. And their texture is frothy. Then we're going to look at numbers 11, 12, and 13. So these are kind of interesting rocks. If I can get the camera to cooperate here. 11, 12, and 13. Very shiny. Very vitreous luster. All three of these have the same texture. They're all glassy. Now, a lot of charts and a lot of books put these as mafic. Sometimes they put them as intermediate. These are really felsic. And the reason that they're felsic is they're rich in quartz. I know it sounds tricky, and it is tricky because, wait a minute, it's dark. How can it be felsic? No, no, it's got to be mafic. No, it's felsic. And it's felsic because just a little bit of iron snuck into this rock here. But if you were to analyze this, this is like 95% quartz. And a little bit of iron got in there to give it a dark color. The reason that this one here is black and kind of a brown color is because it was influenced by some potassium felspar, which gave it the brown color. And then this is another variety of that rock that we call snowflake. So you have three different varieties of the same rock. So these are really felsic. A lot of times in charts, you'll see these listed as intermediate and sometimes even mafic, but they're not. All right, number 14 is a texture we kind of talked about. Actually, I want to turn this guy upside down. This one here has an affinitic background. Because it has a larger mineral in it here, we can actually name this mineral. This very large black mineral is a phenocryst. So under number 14, you're going to check phenocryst. And so texture. This rock is definitely porphyritic. It is also mafic because it's got a lot of green in it. A lot of people can't see the green in this camera. It's not really doing justice to the greenness. Because this has got green in it, it makes it almost ultramafic, but it is mafic. It's mafic. It's porphyritic. It has a phenocryst, and about the only mineral we can really see in here is that black mineral, and that black mineral is ampable. Number 15. This texture is pyroclastic. It's felsic, it's quartz rich, and this is basically ash that was ejected out of a volcano. Ash often will have very fine grain and also large, and that's why this is called pyro. Pyro meaning fire, clastic meaning fragments of other rocks. Okay. Number 15, 16 here. This is ultramafic. There's only one ultramafic rock, basically. This has iron, magnesium. This is the highest temperature. Green color. And I know the camera, again, doesn't really show justice of the green color of this rock. But this is ultramafic green color. Its texture is going to be phanoritic because you can't really see, I mean, I mean, affinitic. This is affinitic. Even though you see some sparkles in here, this is where some of the mineral olivine is coming out of it. So this rock is mostly olivine. So you see just a little bit of a granule. That's why this is a little bit tricky. Very, very fine grain. I mean, it's kind of one of those border affinitic phanoritic rocks. 
And then the last rock we're going to look at today is a felsic rock. We can actually identify some minerals in this. There's a lot of quartz in here. There's a silver mica in here that we will call muscovite. And it's a very large mineral, pink mineral, potassium felspar. The texture of this is pegmatite. So you don't put down a phenocrist for this. This is just a pegmatite. Very large minerals. And when we talk about igneous rocks in lecture, I'll elaborate a little bit more on these textures. So you have the video, so you can pause it on the samples of rocks where I put down the difference between the felsic, the intermediate, and the mafic. Remember, the mafic is rich in iron, high temperature. Felsic, lower temperature, rich in quartz, and felsic. And then look at the textures. You know, the pegmatite, all large minerals. Pegmatites only occur in light colored rocks. Porphyritic, one large mineral. You can see that the pink potassium feldspar dominates this rock. Phanoritic, equal size. Aphanitic, you really can't see any grain size in her at all. Then there's the aphanitic porphyritic. Then there's vesicular, full of holes. And the difference between vesicular and frothy is that frothy simply has very small holes. And frothy floats on water. And then there's my favorite of all the igneous, the glassy look. Definitely glass. And that glass can vary between a brown and a black. And sometimes you get this little flaky stuff in there that looks like little snowflakes. And then we'll put the pyroclastic last. This is all the ejectile material out of the volcano. So remember, texture and color. When you combine the textures and the colors, this chart here may seem archaic. It may be seem a little strange. But this chart is really helpful because it shows the minerals at the top. So light colored rocks contain minerals such as quartz. They contain minerals such as the light colored plagioclase, the micas. Dark colored minerals contain the higher temperature minerals, and we're talking about the olivines, the very black ampoule, the gray color plagioclase, which is calcium rich. And then the ultramafic rocks contain olivine, which makes them green. And then there's these charts, charts number one, two, and three. These charts give good descriptors. And so it's really important that you both listen to both the lecture and this lab and attend definitely the Zoom lab and watch the lab on YouTube. And those combinations will make us successful in identifying igneous rocks. So again, both these rocks are dark, big textural difference. This one you can see minerals, which has lots of plagioclase in it. This one you see no minerals. This formed above ground, this formed below ground. This rock, no visible minerals. This is intermediate. This formed above ground, another intermediate rock. So if you took all this black and white stuff and crushed it together, put it in a blender, it would form a gray rock when you got done with it. This formed underground, lots of time to cool. So both of these are intermediate. 
Both of these are felsic. Surface rock cooled very quickly. Rock that formed underground. In this case, this is a porphyritic texture because the case bar is much larger. This has potassium feldspar, quartz, and plagioclase. A little bit of mica in there. These two rocks here are the vesicular. These are definitely mafic, full of holes. Frothy, both of these, 9 and 10, are both the same texture. A little bit lighter. This one here is definitely felsic. This one's going towards intermediate. And then glass is always going to be felsic, even though it looks dark. Just had a little bit of iron snuck in there. So you can't put any minerals from most of these rocks. This one you can. This is a porphyritic rock. It's full of ampoule. This is the pyroclastic, number 15. Number 16. It does have one main, main mineral on here. We can barely see it, and that's olivine. Number 17, we're going to check off the potassium feldspar, the muscovite, and the quartz. So three minerals in that. So that is basically between this zoom, between the zoom lab and between this recorded lab, hopefully you will become successful in identifying rocks. So this is the first time I've ever done this according to zoom or video, or video recording how to do igneous rocks. They are a difficult group of rocks, so don't get too overwhelmed or too frustrated. Because next we move on to sedimentary rocks, which are much more straightforward.